Thank you very much, TJ. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you for the fantastic work you're doing behind the scenes. Good afternoon, everyone. It's four o'clock. Uh, it's Monday. And uh, happy Monday to each and every one of you who's joined us today. Uh, very excited to host you today uh, as we have our sixth installment of this uh, JGF uh, PTCE Roadmap for Change uh, webinar series that we've been running. We started last week and uh, we're now on week two. And my name is Samora Menze. I'm a program officer here at Jake's Firewall Fellowship. And I'm very, very excited to host you um, this afternoon. Hopefully we can have fun and uh, have some engaging session together. Um, just looking forward at uh, you know, managing what to expect in this session um, as a sort of a, a roadmap for you to know what to, to, what's gonna come up. So uh, I've got um, Dr. Karina America, um, who is a PTC coordinator at the University of Stellenbosch. Um, and uh, she'll be sharing about the application process, what the university has to offer for PTCE students. And then we'll have uh, questions and answer sessions. So uh, make sure you got lots of questions for her. And uh, I guess just before we get started, I think it would be important for us to, to talk about who this person is, why we call Jake Scarlow Fellowship. So for a lot of people, when they hear the name Jigs Harbour, they think about the highway in Cape Town, which has got a lot of traffic. But uh, today we're not gonna be talking about that. Um, we're gonna be talking about Prof. Jigs Harbour, uh, who was the rector uh, at the University of the Western Cape. Uh, Prof. was also a teacher, which really makes him quite special for us. Uh, he also served uh, in the presidency when Nelson Mandela was a president, was, was his advisor at the time. And so there's quite something special about having um, our fellowship have the name of Jigs Um, And so we're very appreciative of that. Um, and I think, you know, before I can continue, I wanna just talk about you know, um, an overview of this webinar that we've had so far. So we started off, as I mentioned, we started off last week on Monday, uh, we're the University of Pretoria, uh, and then we had the University of the Western Cape. And then on Wednesday, we got to hear from our candidate fellows. What is the experience of this program that we offer? And then we got to hear from the University of Cape Town, and then on Friday, we had the uh, University of Witwatersrand, Wurz. And then of course, today we've got the University of Stellenbosch with Dr. Karina America. Tomorrow, which is the last day of this um, uh, webinar series, we'll be having the University of Johannesburg wrapping it up for us. Now, if you know of somebody that will become an amazing teacher, Perhaps you've got a friend, you've got a, somebody you know, you've got a colleague um, who is considering becoming a teacher. Please do share um, our socials with them. And uh, of course, for yourself as well, to go like, go and join, go and see what we do. All of these sessions will be recorded uh, on our socials. So we've got uh, Twitter, we've got um, Facebook and uh, YouTube where these uh, webinars will be um, held. Before we even get started with this session, I just wanna talk a little bit about who Jigs Harbour is. What, what, what is this um, JGF or Jigs Harbour Fellowship is about? There's a short uh, two minute video that explains um, what we are about. So have a look. Thank you, Rudy. At the Jake Scarborough Fellowship, we believe the future is created with intention. So we actively work to construct a world in which every child is enrolled in a quality school staffed by expert teachers dedicated to releasing their learners' full potential. We also believe that it only takes a small group of people to create change in the world. Big thinking, bold dreamers who share our vision of the future and have the highest likelihood of solving the most pressing education challenges that South Africa faces. 
this is why we invest in individuals who have the potential to improve the quality of education and thereby drive a much needed shift towards a more equitable, socially just and prosperous country. As a Jake's Clairville Fellow, you will gain a launch pad from which to craft your impact in the world. An inspirational community that walks alongside you and supports your journey as well as the best possible learning experiences to set you up for long-term success as an expert teacher, educational leader, or social entrepreneur. Our involvement continues into an alumni community of practice that fosters collaboration and aims to leverage fellow influence and leadership towards broader systemic change. Becoming a Jake's Clavel Fellow is an opportunity to reach your high impact goals, meet like-minded thinkers, and create positive change in the world. Find out more and apply at www.jgfellowship.org. Thank you for that uh, amazing video, um, Rudy. And now, JGF, or Jake's Harbour Fellowship, is about supporting teachers, nurturing teachers. Now, I had an amazing teacher in my matric year. Uh, Mr. Barker was an English teacher who really believed in me and uh, encouraged me to do my best. And I think I owe it to him that I've made it this far out of life. Now, I wonder if uh, any of the person, people here, you know, if uh, you've got a teacher that you would like to just mention, just mention who your favorite teacher is or was and, uh, and explain to us why. I invite everybody to drop um, your response in the chat. I've got Rudy Machis response there. Mrs. Spencer taught me English in grade 11 and 12. She was amazing. And she believed in me more than any other teacher would. Amazing there, Machi. Let's see if there's any other responses coming through. Okay. Two Lingosi, my English teachers, absolutely rock star, absolute rock stars. Incredible, incredible. That's fantastic. Um, keep them coming, everyone. Thank you so much for, for those responses that have come through so far. Um, if I do miss any responses, uh, Rudy, please uh, bring your voice in and help me through them. Um, I think before we move on to our next, our next phase, um, I just want to you know, invite um, uh, everyone who is on this call, uh, if you are able to, uh, please, you know, keep your videos on. Um, and uh, these sessions are being recorded. Uh, so if you could also please make sure that your microphone is off. Uh, we would not like to have any um, interruption, especially as our, our, our guest speaker um, speaks. We would like to make sure that everything is clear for the recordings. And um, I'm going to introduce our incredible speaker this afternoon, uh, Dr. Karina America. Now, Dr. Karina America is a senior lecturer in the Department of Curriculum Studies uh, at the University of Stellenbosch. Uh, she's also the coordinator for the PTCE program, Postgraduate Certificate in Education at Stellenbosch. She has been involved in the uh, recurriculation of the PTCE for business education specifically economics, business studies, and accounting teaching. She has also participated in several national uh, research projects, which are related to curriculum analysis, development, and assessment in business education. Her research and publication interests are on the teacher education, business education, and she has also co-edited a book Teacher Education for Transformative Agency, Critical Perspectives on Design, Content, and Pedagogy. So without any further ado, let me bring Dr. America to our screens this afternoon. Dr. America, if you can please unmute yourself. And I would like to invite you before you, before you, you, you start with your presentation. I would like to know who was your favorite teacher and why? I'm sure you must have one. Yes, yes, I, I actually did have one. I had a few, 
um, very good teachers. Um, and um, uh, what the teacher that stood out for me um, was my accounting teacher. And um, I then happened to meet him years, years later. And, uh, you know, I, and what I remember of him is the fact that he was so strict, um, which was uh, something that was very annoying to us then. But um, yes, um, yes, that's the teacher that I remember. But I, there are many others. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> Lovely to know. Lovely to know. Thank you so much for sharing, Dr. America. Um, uh, Rudy will have your presentation up as now, and uh, you can then start with your presentation once you are ready. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. And um, good afternoon to everyone um, interested in the postgraduate certificate in education. Like um, mentioned before, I'm the program coordinator at Stellenbosch University um, for, for this particular program. Now, I thought I'll um, arrange my slides according to the most prominent questions that always, um, you know, comes up when, you know, I get inquiries about this program. So the first one is what this program is about. It's actually a professional qualification to become a teacher. And in our case, um, the PGCE is specifically for, for you to become a high school teacher that is now in the uh, grades 10 to 12. And our program is approved by the higher, um, uh, uh, um, um, by the Department of Higher Education and accredited by um, the Council of Higher Education and registered by SACWA. So the duration of the program is a one-year full-time program. Unfortunately, we do not have part-time. And um, the yearbook is very specific that you cannot take up um, any full-time employment at the, you know, while you, you are busy with this program. Next slide, please. Um, so what are the uh, minimum uh, requirements for this program? Um, you need to have a degree um, and it must be at NQF level seven from a recognized higher education institution. And there are certain strict criteria. There is a selection committee and uh, we look at your, uh, your um, your academic record and whether you meet these requirements. And these requirements are very, very detailed in our yearbook. Um, the program attracts many, many applications, but unfortunately we have a cap to it. So the intake is limited. And um, even though some of the students may meet some of the requirements, it doesn't uh, necessarily guarantee a place. Um, and very important is that the PGCE must be your first choice when you apply at Stellenbosch University. So we look at that. And then we also look at whether you have two school subjects according to the prerequisite um, requirements. Um, the one teaching specialization is limited, but can be considered in the case of music, um, uh, for example, but um, in, in that case, you know, we, we look at also a, a minimum number of, of students and the staff capacity and the resources of the, of the faculty. And during the selection process, um, minimum number of registrations will be considered, like I said, for certain specialization subjects. And we will normally inform the students when they apply beforehand. Next slide, please. Um, the due date for um, application, it's a very, you know, limited time that applications are open. It's from the 1st of July to the 30th of September. If you are a student at Stellenbosch University, you can access the application um, website from on Sun student. If you apply from outside of Stellenbosch University, that link will only be open um, just, you know, before the 1st of July, and it will be on the university's website. And unfortunately, no late applications will be accepted. Uh, may I register for another course or module? 
Um, can you just go back to the previous slide, please? Um, as a PGCE student, you may not register concurrently for another module and or program um, at this or any other university. I think there is a misconception that this is an easy one year quick certificate, um, but it's actually a packed, packed program and um, you know students sometimes struggle to get through the year um, and it is not um, something that you can do while you have other modules in other programs. Next slide please. Um, class attendance is compulsory because it's a full-time program. Your subject specialization um, lecturer can you know, give evidence whether you are ready to go on school practice. And we must remember the school practice um, is the, the whole of the third term. Um, and if there's clear evidence from your subject specialization that you're not ready for the school to go do your school practice, then you can actually be, um, you know, not uh, disallowed to go. And the dean can also refuse to allow you to participate in your school practice. And that would, uh, in essence, then extend your year, your, 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 your studies by a year. So um, this is actually quite serious that you have to attend, um, class attendance is compulsory. And then no student will be permitted to join the PGC program after it has started because this, the program is so packed and there are strict time lines to everything. Um, we normally start here in the middle of February with, with lectures. When do I do the observation? The observation before you register for the program, you go out for two weeks for observation. It can be in your hometown. So before you come out to Stellenbosch and get settled in, um, at, in the Stellenbosch or in Cape Town, there you can actually do your observation in your hometown and all the documentation, everything will be, um, will, you will have access to from the practical learning office before you commence with your observation. Next slide, please. When do I go for school practice as part of my practical learning? It's in the third term. You spend the entire third term and it's the third term of the school calendar. So it doesn't always correspond with the university holidays and we don't make an ex um, any exceptions there. So we follow the school, school timetable then. Um, you must complete the practical um, component to practical learning and you, practical learning has the highest credits, 32 credits we will see now. And um, it's, it's actually, a, there's a theoretical component to practical uh, school-based learning. And then obviously there's a practical component and there are various activities um, uh, attached to it. So um, it's, it's actually, uh, you know, quite, quite hectic for some, for some students. Uh, PGCE students um, visit schools in the Stellenbosch and in the surrounding areas. Next slide, please. Now, the structure of the program is that practical learning 32 credits, the highest. Then you have your two specialization subjects, 20 credits each. So you may decide to become a English teacher and a geography teacher, and that's your two specialization subjects. And that will be um, 20 credits each. Then you have your core modules ranging from eight credits to five credits. Um, and um, you know, it's um, you can see it's a, a quite a lot of uh, a number of, of modules. Eight credits, you have four modules, then you have two six credit modules, and then you have your languages. Um, you have the Afrikaans um, language of, just go back please, um, Fantal in um, Leer in Onerich, and English as language of learning and teaching. And Isikosa as a language of conversational competence is compulsory. So you can either choose Afrikaans or English, and then you have to do Isikosa. And that will bring you to 126 credits. Next slide, please. So for further inquiries about this program, you can contact Ms. Karen Tom at pgce.ac.za. 
Um, any questions you can, you know, email to that email address or you can ask me now. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Dr. America. Uh, that was very insightful and very informative as well. Um, uh, I wish when I was wondering about what to do when I was a student that I, I had access to this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of information. Um, okay. Very, very helpful. Let's see, um, are there any questions from our guests uh, and our participants here? I see there's a number of questions. Let me just have a look at these questions. All right, so there's a question from uh, Rudy Mahi. Can one register for PGCE with a diploma uh, and as, as an example in tourism? So could, could somebody with a tourism diploma um, register for PGCE? It has to be an advanced diploma because it must be at NQF level seven. Yeah. Okay, so NQF level seven. Um, can one study a PGCE if they intend to teach the arts, drama, music, etc.? So can somebody, yes. Yeah, those, sub, uh, the subjects, um, depending on the number of students that are, are interested, uh, or that's interested, um, you, you, we have at the moment um, for those modules between 15, a cut off um, because we normally get part time lecturers in, but music and drama and art um, that it, it varies the intake of it. So, for this year, we had drama and music that was offered. Previous years, we also offered art, but um, it also depends on how many people, how many students, you know, apply. Right, thank you very much, uh, Doc. There's another question from Chuli. Um, she asked, how does the university support graduates looking for teaching posts? We, we actually give um, information that we get from, from SAIS, uh, any information from the unions. Um, we actually do have a web page um, in our internal learning management system that we give those kind of information. Um, but it's, we, we don't really take responsibility in looking for vacancies for the, for the students, but we do assist if we know of, 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 of our vacancies. Right, great, thank you. A uh, question from my side. Um, uh, you know, Stellenbosch has been, um, there's been this, con this conversation that's been going on for a while, Stellenbosch, around the language policy. Um, so if somebody does not speak any Afrikaans, are they able to just to complete this PTC at Stellenbosch? Um, is there any support if the, if the modules are offered in Afrikaans or what, what, is the, um, what is the policy at the moment? Um, we do offer, um, the PGCE in, in English and Afrikaans. Um, so um, even if you can't speak Afrikaans, that shouldn't deter you from applying. So uh, in most cases, the lectures are offered in, in English with the alternative of, you know, the, you, you asking the lecturer to translate. Notes are being made available in Afrikaans. The course outline is available in Afrikaans. So um, we make provision for both languages. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. America. There was a hand. Um, Siwa Piwe. Siwa Piwe, your hand is up. You can unmute. Yes, Samora. Thank you so much. And thank you to Dr. America. So my question is, I hope you can hear me. Can you? Because yes, I, I can. I'm driving. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so my question uh, is, um, because PGCE, there are students from different uh, backgrounds and degrees who are not um, who are not exposed to academic writing and reading. I just want to know what support does uh, Stellenbosch um, offer to those kind of students to make sure that they are set up for success? Um. 
obviously the university as a whole has um you know support structures um for academic writing we have the language center but you also get um a lot of support from the lecturers themselves um that you can at any time approach in the pgc program so apart from the normal structures that we do have at Stellenbosch University, we also, you know, have a, a very approachable um, staff that you can, you know, if you do get stuck, if you do have questions, you, we, the lecturers are more than willing to help. I hope that answers your question. Is there, is, was that suffice? Thank you, Total America, I did. Okay, thank you. Wait, I see there's more questions in the chat. So I'll read some of this question. I see this is from Trudy again. Uh, can one apply for PGCE even if they only intend to have one specialization? Are those with more than one specialization prioritized? We, we do give preference to two specialization um, subjects. Um, uh, some, also because it opens up more opportunities for you to apply when you qualify as a teacher. Um, you know, you have more options in getting a job um, as a teacher, but um, the one specialization subject is very, very limited because um, um, at the moment we only have it uh, probably for, for music um, and one, one or two other subjects, but it's on the whole, we give preference to those students with two, two subjects, yes. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions right now. It looks like everyone has been answered, but if you do have questions, um, Dr. America did share uh, the email address where you can send your questions um, and any uh, queries you might have or any, um, yeah, you can direct those to that email address. Um, Dr. America, this has been great, um, very insightful. And I think, you know, um, uh, the people who did ask their questions, you know, that they've got some clarity uh, as to what to do next. Um, from your side, any, any um, closing remarks perhaps um, before we move on to the next section? Yes, um, thank you very much again for this opportunity. Um, you, you know, prospective students are more than welcome to send that email um, to pgce.ac.za. Um, we may, you know, take a day or two to answer, but we will get back to you. And you can also then, when you send that email, we'll give you a link to the yearbook that will explain everything in much more detail than what I have with this presentation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't do it with, with one presentation. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll send you the link to the yearbook that will explain everything about the program. And if you still, um, you know, still have questions, then please send uh, the email again to that email address. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, as we move on to our next um, segment of this presentation now, uh, we're going to be hearing from our selection manager, um, Amira Suti Pillay. Um, Please uh, take it away, Rudy. Hi, my name is Amira Surti Pele, and I am the selection manager at Jace Hadwell Fellowship. If you believe that you're the kind of individual who can make an impact and a positive change in South Africa's education system, I would like to invite you to apply for our PGCE Jace Hadwell Fellowship. You can do this by nominating yourself or another individual on our website. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn to see what we're all about. We hope to see you apply and we hope to see you make a change. Thank you very much, Amira, for that wonderful message. And uh, just before you apply, there's an eligibility um, quiz which we'd like you to, uh, to take um, just to see whether you are eligible um, for this fellowship. So you need to be South African. So you must have a South African ID. Um, you need to have your academic results. Um, so you're either your final year student, 
or you already graduate with a bachelor's degree or higher. Uh, and then you need to obviously have an intention to studying with our partner universities. Uh, so do your PTCE at uh, Stellenbosch University, at UCT, at UWC, or at University of Pretoria, or at WITS, or University of Johannesburg. Um, so you need to be studying with those or applying with those universities. Um, and then once you become a teacher for two years, you, um, you'll be part of the newly qualified teacher program. Um, and then you need to be under 30 years old for you to join this um, um, fellowship. And uh, our closing dates for application is the 25th of July. So um, do not procrastinate. Make sure you start as soon as you can, as soon as possible. Um, and that's, that's it, folks. Um, thank you very much for everyone who's joined us today. Uh, and a special thanks to Dr. America for her time and uh, just for, for, for just your insight here and um, your presentation, which was fantastic and to the point, and then your responses to the questions. And we thank you for your valued time here um, on this Monday. So I hope everyone will have a wonderful week um, and have a great week, a productive week. And then again, just to, to highlight that tomorrow we are wrapping up uh, this uh, webinar series uh, with the University of Johannesburg um, at four o'clock to five o'clock, um, same time. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, hope you guys will have a wonderful day. Salani Gaste, Babayeni Dotsins. Thank you. Bye bye.